Hi, welcome back to part 2 of 17F, Limits and Continuity. If you haven't seen part 1, please click on the link below before you watch this video. Previously, we looked at piecewise defined function. We said that by restricting the domain, we get different parts of the graph. In other words, we consider only some x values. And as a result, we only sketch a portion or a small piece of the entire graph. So for example, the first function is a cubic function. Since we restrict the domain to be greater than or equal to zero and less than one, so as you can see, the domain is listed here. We only sketch this small piece of the entire cubic function. So usually the cubic function looks something like this. Um, however, since we're restricting the domain, it's going to look different. Greater than or equal to is a closed dot because we are including the value zeros. That's why we started off with a, um, a closed dot. And we have an open dot at 1 since the upper bound is less than 1. So it doesn't really include 1. So that's why we use an open dot. All right, so that explains the first piece of this graph. So the second function is a constant when y is equal to 5. When y is equal to 5, usually we would have a line, a horizontal line, and we know this has equation y equals 5. Now, the domain is restricted to be 1, which means x only takes the value 1, and when x equals 1, of course the y value will be 5. So that's why we simply have one dot. The third function is y is equal to 6. And here, domain is restricted where x is between, so greater than 1 or less than or equal to 2. So that means we have an open dot at 1 and a closed dot at 2, since we're including the value 2. So that explains this piecewise defined function. As you can see, it's very special. And we are being very selective here since we are restricting the domain. Like we said before, the notation of limits is used to describe the asymptotes of graphs. And let's do a quick recall. What are asymptotes? For example, if we have an ascending curve um, that's similar to the left part of this truncus, if a curve is a sanding curve that is going up and approaching the y-axis, as you can see here, it doesn't really reach the vertical axis. So it doesn't meet, it doesn't touch the y-axis. So we say that this curve is asymptotic to the y-axis, which is the asymptote of the curve. Another asymptote is actually the x-axis in this case, um, because the graph never reaches the horizontal axis either. All right, let's look at this function. So the function of where x can be any real number except 0, right, excluding 0. The reason is that truncus is in a fraction form and the variable x is in the denominator. So we say that we can never have a 0 as the denominator in a fraction. So that's why x can be any real number except 0. We can clearly see that as x approaches 0 from both the left and from the right, the function f of x increases without bound. The limit notation for this is that limit when x approaches 0, the function f of x approaches infinity. Now let's look at the graph. When x is increasing from the left-hand side, all right, so it's increasing, getting closer to 0, the graph is getting higher and higher, but there is no upper bound. It can go on forever, all right, therefore approaching positive infinity. Let's look at the right-hand side of the graph. If we're approaching zero from the right-hand side, again, the y value is increasing, okay? We say that the value of this graph, as we approach zero from the right-hand side, it approaches positive infinity. Now consider the rectangular hyperbola, and we're excluding zero for our x value because the denominators can never be zero. The graph g of x as x approaches zero from the left is different from the behavior as x approaches zero from the right. So from the left, as x approaches zero, the limit of the graph approaches negative infinity. So as you can see here, 
the y value as x approaches zero the y value is approaching negative infinity so we can write this as uh, the limit when x approaches zero from the negative side the function g of x is approaching negative infinity now let's look at the right hand side when x approaches zero from the right hand side the y value is approaching positive infinity so we can also say that the limit when x approaches zero from the positive side from the right hand side the function g of x is approaching positive infinity okay now let's shift our perspective we can see that as x increases through positive values so as x gets bigger and bigger on the right hand side the graph approaches zero right because the, the line is going down likewise as x decreases through negative values so when x is getting smaller on the left hand side the graph also approaches zero okay but since we have asymptotes so x is the horizontal asymptotes so this rectangular hyperbola never reaches zero symbolically this can be written as the limit as x approaches positive infinity our graph approaches zero from the positive side and the limit as x approaches negative infinity the graph approaches zero from the negative side and this is just something to keep in mind. Many functions approach a limiting value or limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity. All right, now let's look at the rules. Um, a function f is continuous at point x equals a if the following conditions are met. First condition states that the function f of x is defined at x equals a. So that means the graph needs to show a closed dot when x equals a, so at this certain value. The second condition states that the limit as x approaches a for this function f of x needs to be the same as um, the function when x equals a. Um, if, so that, that means if the chosen point is x equals a, then the value that the graph is approaching from the left and right of the value must be the same in order for the function to be continuous this all sounds really confusing but we'll make sense of this rule using the following examples all right in this example we're stating the values for x for which the functions shown below have a discontinuity so let's test them out in question a it's very clear that we have a discontinuity at x equals one so that means we're actually taking x to be one so one is our a value in the rule there is a discontinuity at x equals one the reason is that when the function is f of one so when we're subbing x equals one the value is three we look for the closed dot okay when x equals one we look up and we say that the exact value is three however the limit when x approaches 1 from the positive side, so from this side, okay, on this function, that actually equals 2 because it's on the line, which is described by this open dot, okay? So we say that the discontinuity occurs when x equals 1. All right, in question B, there is a discontinuity at x equals 1 again. Now, at x equals 1, which is here, the function f of 1 equals 2, right? We look for the closed dot and the limit of the function when x is approaching 1 from the negative value from the negative side equals 2 also. So that's good. Okay, as you can see, as we are approaching x equals 1 from the negative side, the corresponding y value for our function is also two which is represented by this closed dot so that seems fine however the problem is that the limit when x is approaching one from the positive side on this function equals three we say that this function has a discontinuity at x equals one last but not least 
we have a discontinuity at x equals 1. And this is because the function when x equals 1 equals 1. So it's this closed dot here when x equals 1, y also equals 1. So that's good. And let's try to test it from the left. So when x approaches 1 from the negative side, on this function, the answer is also 1. Okay, so we're approaching 1 from the left-hand side, and the value that it's approaching is also 1. However, the problem is here. The limit when x approaches 1 from the positive side equals 2. After testing, we conclude that there is a discontinuity at x equals 1. In this example, for each function, we need to state the value of x for which there is a discontinuity and use the definition of continuity in terms of f of a and the limit as x approaches a from the positive side and the limit as x approaches a from the negative values to explain why. Question a. The first condition, if we let a to be 0, then 2 times 0, that equals 0. So we say that when x equals 0, the function also equals 0. However, when we're testing the second condition, when x approaches 0 from the negative side, because so that's the second function, when x approaches 0 from the negative side, the function actually evaluates to 1, because two, negative 2 times 0 equals 0. So the first term disappears and we are left with plus one, so positive one. Therefore, we say that there is a discontinuity at x equals zero. Second question. Again, we're testing zero. When a equals zero, let's try sub it in. The function at x equals zero equals zero because x squared is simply zero squared, that still equals zero. Let's try the second condition. The limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side on this function, the function is approaching 1 because when x equals 0, the first term again disappears and we're left with 1. Since the two conditions don't match up, we say that the, there is a discontinuity at x equals 0. And in question C, we're given two a values to test out. The first one is negative 1 and the second one is 0. So if we take a to be negative 1 first, let's try the first condition. When x equals negative 1, the value is also negative 1 according to the first function. For the limit, when x approaches this value negative 1, okay, when x approaches negative 1 from the positive side, the function equals to 1. Since x squared, if we square negative 1, we have 1 as the answer. And clearly, negative 1 and 1, they're different, so there is a discontinuity at x equals negative 1. Now let's try 0. So when a is equal to 0, we sub it in, the function equals 1. So you, now we look at the third function, because that's the only function where the domain includes 0. Okay, so negative 2 times 0 equals 0, and 0 plus 1 equals 1. And now let's try the limit. The limit where x approaches 0 from the negative side, the function is equal to 0. So here we're looking back at the second function, 0 squared equals 0. So we say that there is a discontinuity at x equals 0 as well. Okay, so here we have two answers for question C. Right, now let's try D. When x is equal to 0, the first function evaluates to 1 because x squared, when x equals 0, 0 squared equals 0 and 0 plus 1 equals 1. And if we now look at the limit, as x approaches 0 from the negative side according to the second function, the function f of x approaches 1 as well because when you're subbing x equals 0 into the second function, negative 2 times 0 equals 0, and the first term disappears, and you're left with 1 only. Since the two conditions were met, so we say that there is no discontinuity. Last but not least, let's try question E. So when x equals 0, the function equals 0 according to the first, uh, first function, and the limit 
as x approaches 0 from the negative side, according to the second domain, the second function, the function also approaches 0, because negative 2 times 0 also equal to 0. Since the two conditions are met, therefore our conclusion is that there is no discontinuity. Okay, I hope you find this video helpful, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!